Greetings, weary traveler, come, warm yourself by the fire, and let us regale you with mighty tales, tales of adventure, tales of heroism, tales of victory for some of us, and tales <laughs> of Tamriel. I'm your host, Arkanir, and I'm joined by, as usual, our amazing crew here, starting with the man, the myth, the legend, Lotus of Doom himself. How's it going, Lotus? Good. I am uh, only partly victorious. I'm, I'm two-thirds victorious. <laughs> Well, we'll get to that, and I'll happily <laughs> tease you about it. Damn uh, it. <laughs> we are also joined by the Giggle Queen herself, the joy of the show, Hyper Pixie. How's it going, Pixie? Going great, and I'm 100% victorious. There we go. <laughs> Tonight, we tease Lotus. Oh, man. <laughs> This is my Chicken favorite come home in a roost <laughs> <over> that saying. <laughs> Look, Lotus, you've been on the clear for a long time, okay? So your time has come. Your yep. time has come, which... I've earned you, this. <laughs> yeah, you, you did, you did. But before we, <laughs> before we get into all that, we got a couple shout-outs and an iTunes review to read. So, starting with, we got a new Patreon supporter with the Vanguard tier leading the charge. He is in chat as well. Star Falling Games, aka Kinara. Thanks so much for supporting us. Um, so you can actually find him streaming at Star Falling Games on Twitch. He streams a lot of Elder Scrolls Online as well. He's a great dude. And he also suffered with us this week, which we will get to in our tales. But definitely go check him out and thank you so much. Also, from our community, Lars upgraded to leading the charge as a vanguard from being a torchbearer over on our Patreon. Lars, thank you so much as well, both of you. We really, really do appreciate it, especially now that I've done some <laughs> fun things with real life that we will yeah. see how it turns out. Uh, I'll get to that in a bit. We also have an iTunes review, as mentioned, it's a five-star review by Mr. Braid, uh, Brady, Brady, I hope. Um, Brady. I Brady, think. okay, I was right at first, and then I wasn't sure if I was right at yep. first, and I Hopefully changed it. And... <laughs> I, well, I guess no matter what, we butchered it and possibly corrected <laughs> yeah. it, or got it wrong, and then I, one way or another, it's both butchered and correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's titled, I've never played ESO, but the message is, I've only played Skyrim, but I like to listen, and we are glad that you like to listen, even if you don't play ESO. Um, it, it, it actually makes me happy that we can, uh, you know, I for, I don't know the word. Entertain, even if this isn't your game of choice, I, sus uh, I suppose. There we go, yes. Yeah. Yes. People who I... don't just play ESO as well, like, uh, or rather, n never even played ESO. So that kind of right. um, feels successful that we are an Elder Scrolls podcast, not just Elder Scrolls Online podcast. Um, yep. But since Elder Scrolls Online is the only active game in Elder Scrolls Universe at the moment, especially with, you know, Elder Scrolls Legends being cut out, or yeah. rather stop Blades development. has staggered updates, um, which yeah. I like to stay on top of, but they, <laughs> they've, other than, I mean, the last update was, now you can have different loadouts. <laughs> like, that was the most recent update. It's like, alright, that's cool with the little, like, weekly Amazing. quest, but Amazing! <laughs> yeah. I will say that if somebody has only played Skyrim, they probably really dislike the Ultimate Dominion, so I've, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Brady. Mr. Brady. I did play a High Elf in Skyrim, though, so there's still hope. Oh, see, the, <laughs> the more you say things like this, Pixie, the more <laughs> you give me ammunition to, to just, like, fire at you. I mean, playing Skyrim as a High Elf is like the lowest you can go because that's the <laughs> game that made everyone hate high elves you know I that's backstory for her she wasn't evil mm, she was a high elf she was evil she There's... wasn't born in the <laughs> that Isles. like there are high elves that are born elsewhere like there are probably also high elves that are born in elsewhere if we're being honest <laughs> um, intended or unintended it was a fun pun it was unintended at first but it worked out <laughs> But there are high elves that are born outside of the Somerset Isles and outside of the Old Mary Dominion, and that was like my backstory for why she was there. That she was born somewhere else, and she'd crossed the border to go visit Skyrim, and just got caught up 
And then all of a sudden she finds out her people are racist, but she had never lived there. So she didn't know. So I had like this whole backstory for her where she was okay. I am never accepting a high elf dragonborn. That's just never going to happen. <laughs> well, too it bad what... because I mm -hmm. killed some dragons with her. And absorb their souls. No, no, no. <laughs> I will not accept it. I mean, he, I figured that was like, he was mostly lizard, so it would make sense that <laughs> he would be a dragonborn. <laughs> that was actually my reasoning behind making my character. <laughs> See, oh, you were an Argonian. <laughs> yep. Oh, I can I accept like, an Argonian, yeah. just not a high elf. I, if okay, it was a wood right, elf, right. Dunmer, you know, orc, then fine. Not, just not high elf. Yep. It's, <laughs> Choose my, on Grant, the Argonian. My first tune was a Breton. My second tune was a High Elf. My third tune was a was a Khajiit or a Wood Elf. I can't remember. And then from then on out, it's just been a whole bunch of High Elves. So you played Skyrim with <sighs> everything but Nords, which was the main point. Great. I like magic and sneaky things. You can do magic Neither and sneaky things, things with a Nord, which may not work all well but you know so yeah i, I see, feel like it's just fighting against the game at that point well see this is the problem because this is what we devolve into each time and why yeah. like going forward like when i play another when i finally in the year you know 30 35 when i actually beat elder scrolls arena <laughs> and can start daggerfall <laughs> I want to make it so that people can suggest what I'm going to play, but I know everyone will just say High Elf just because they know I'll hate it. <laughs> so, like, that kind of yeah. takes away some of the... They're just like, oh, man, everybody doesn't like High Elves except Pixie. High Elf. <laughs> and it's like... No, no, no. Listen, if they suggest High Elf, it's not because you hate High Elves. It's because they know you need Passwall and you need the intelligence and the only intelligent <laughs> race... <laughs> It, it, enough to use Passwall natively is high elves. Uh, well, see, this derailing, you can also blame on Pixie. Uh, because yep, if yep. she just played a Nord, this wouldn't have happened. Like I have a Nord. It's just not a good enough Nord for you because I picked the alliance you don't like. True, true. So well, have there, you seen me fault. to be a tolerant person in Tomriel? No. <laughs> Which is why the High Elves are better, because the High Elf person is way more tolerant than the Nord over here. Yeah, she'll just doom all of her people by bringing all of their enemies into their own motherlands, which... Nah. But okay, it's at we're least not gonna, Kate hold on. can say a while Let's... it's happening. <laughs> exactly! Thank you, Lotus! Look, I, I'm not I'm not for the Dominion, but at least it's Kate Beckinsale while she's dooming her people. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, you know what I say. The only good thing about Queen Iran is Kate Beckinsale, and the worst thing about Kate Beckinsale is Queen Iran. It is what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, that's mm -hmm. it. It's it's really Zen when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Zen, Yin Yang, it's it all works out. <laughs> good One and of evil, the other evil best and good. Yeah. Is Rosamdar. And that is why I will never leave the old Mary Dominion. Rosamdar is cool, especially Um so there is one really like I don't I, because I didn't play the entire Aldmere Dominion storyline. I don't know Roz all that much, but in Somerset expansion, there is one move Razumdar pulls that I really liked. You know, you know how in most uh, quests in Elder Scrolls Online, they give you the choice to rather kill the villain or not. Like you always get that. Oh, okay, kill him because he deserves it, and. Um, Oh, okay, let him live because he can, you know, redeem himself and things like that. Mm -hmm. In Somerset, there's the city that is basically, like, sunk, sunk, sinking into the mud or water, something like that. I don't remember. Oh, I know what one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the lord's, the city's lord's uh, son is involved in the Daedric stuff. He's getting a bunch of people killed. And you finish that quest, and I'm like, I'm waiting for that... Um, option to pop up like Razumdar to ask me whether to kill him or let him live and instead Razumdar just unsheats a sword and stabs the dude <laughs> in the chest I'm like I like Razumdar he's no, he's good. Razumdar is amazing 
And that leads into my point that I've made like in several episodes that Queen Irene leans heavily on Rosamdar because she is so young. And so if you like Rosamdar, then you like Queen Irene because Rosamdar like really is her most trusted Have advisor. You done- the uh northern elsewhere quest with Razumdar when he goes home is like it to part his of the family main yes well no it's a side quest it's, but it's no i haven't done that one yeah i need to oh, yes i strong i i can try to figure out exactly the location for you but you get to see his family life when oh, he's man, off I duty and it's amazing oh my God. <laughs> i can't believe i missed this one it's so good I it's so good <laughs> yep it's such a great storyline <laughs> But yeah, so Rosamdar, like, that's Queen Irene's most trusted advisor. So whenever I say that, like, in past episodes that I love Queen Irene because she knows when she doesn't have the sufficient experience to handle a situation and she looks to her advisors, Rosamdar is the one who's there to, like, speak up and let her know which way is the right way to go. The best thing Rosamdar could do for Queen Irene is pulling the same move he does in that quest line. You are a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a horrible person. That? I'm a good Nord. I'm. I would make a horrible high elf apparently because I hate all of them. But yeah, I was gonna say you immediately end your own <laughs> <laughs> character. It's like, well, not a character creation. Hurl self off cliff. <laughs> I mean, I do that as a tank. <laughs> Just screaming, heal me on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Blame the healer when you roll off the. Cliff and Vet Scale Collar Peak final boss. <laughs> I mean, so we made it most of the way through. Like, what actually? What did we even make it through before we got into a race and alliance war? That uh, was quicker. So than we were doing shout outs, and <laughs> and Mr. Brady mentioned Skyrim, which wasn't a good. <laughs> That's idea. what it was. I was like, how did, we get to a, how did we get to an alliance war before we even got anywhere? That's right. Yep. Yeah, Skyrim was mentioned, and Pixies on yep, the show. Skyrim so. was mentioned. Got it. <laughs> It had to happen. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for the five star review. Yeah, exactly. Thank yeah, you. yeah. yeah. The this is why we nine moved. minute tangent. Yeah, this is why we moved Tales of Tom Real for like forward in the show because then at least we can act like it was all part of Tales. You know? Right, it all blends. Uh, <laughs> Tales from seven years ago when we were playing Skyrim, but. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> hey, as long Listen, as Listen, I wasn't works. here seven years ago, so I made up time. You're, exactly. You, you've got to make up for, for lost episodes. Yeah, yeah. Like, could you exactly. imagine if I got pulled in during the Skyrim days and then you guys found out I was playing a high elf? <laughs> so, Oof. as much as it also <laughs> makes it sound like I ever have any idea what I'm doing in-game... Everybody's always like worried about getting in and you know learning the game. Since I had no experience with MMOs when I started this game, I was only told that I was a tank because I was acting like a tank. I was just like, I want to do this. <laughs> this is how I play the single player games. <laughs> and as a result, I was later told that you're a tank. That's what you're doing. And I'm like, perfect. Just, <laughs> just whatever you people say. Direct me at the bad things. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so Tales of Tarmia, actual Tales of Tarmia, uh, what we've been doing <laughs> this past week between the last show and this one. Um, let's see. Now, I'm going to leave Lotus to last. Yeah, I was going to say, we can leave my... Because we are going to talk <laughs> about our victory tales first with Pixie. Oh, man. So, Pixie, what have you done last week in Elder Scrolls Online? I killed the blue bastard. Yes, I did (laughs) too. I did it. I did it. Finally. Okay, so this is kind of a long story because it was just, it was a long time coming. So when Scalebreaker launched, or shortly thereafter, I went for a hard mode attempt. And I died 107 times total in the dungeon. 97 of those were against the final boss hard mode. So, then, recently, after that, I was just like, I'm never going in this dungeon again. I don't want to ever see this blue dragon's face again in my entire life, and I'll be happier for it. 
And then I decided recently, you know what? It's time for round two against that bastard. And we went back into the dungeon. And we had a couple of the same group members, the tank and Madigon. So Lego and Madigon were both still with me. And we died 47 times the second try. Third try. It was a lore seeker trial night, but the trial got canceled because of real life things that came up for a lot of members. And I get a message from Solus Gaming saying, hey, you want to give Vet Lair of Marcela card mode another shot? I have some people who can come with me. So Solus, Bron Solo, Azure, and I from the Lore Seekers trial team all decided to throw ourselves at this dungeon 65 times before <laughs> going to sleep. We got him down to 7% and died. That number will... That's a Haunt very sad now. feeling because we've done that last night with, mm. with, with our team. Exactly like 7%-ish. <laughs> so brutal. And then like the bad thing is, is that fight will psych you out so bad because it's the same thing over and over and over again. Like once you understand, like once you get past that first seed phase and you see that first breath, it's just repeat that, period, for mm -hmm. a long time. But if you get hit by anything, you're just screwed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is pretty much the way it goes. Unless yeah. you're Arcanine, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we just went at it and went at it and went at it that night, 65 times. We got it down to 7% once, and then it just like got worse from there. It was really tragic, and it was super frustrating. We're like, you know what? Let's call it a night, let's go to bed. We all have to work tomorrow. And then we came back a couple days later, Solus and Bronze Solo were both from Sons of Sith, this podcast, were both streaming it, and we got the clear. During the pull that we got the clear, though, me, the healer, died in wing slap territory. <laughs> so Solus managed to res me without getting bitch slapped by this dragon. Sorry about my language. I'm glad it's not PG. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we don't have yeah, to, we don't have to do the... It was a good so, time that we did what we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because this one, it just doesn't have the same effect without the bad words. So he, I'm in bitch slap range. I get rezzed and I'm immediately healing again. There's other things that just go tragically wrong because of like just positioning and everything. Then all of a sudden, I'm like almost out of magicka. I'm panicking. I'm like, I have ulti and I have a potion. I'm just going to try to save those as long as possible because that's all it's like getting me through what I'm doing right now. And then I hear Solus go, hard focus boss. And then uh, like a couple seconds and I hear hard focus boss. And I was like, oh my God. And so then I look up and I see 7%. I hear, hard focus boss? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So then I had to make the split second choice. I was like, okay. Do I save Panacea in case shit goes down? Or do I just drop my Col Colossus and just hope for the best? And I just made the call to drop the Colossus. And then I hear, hard focus boss, hard focus boss, hard focus boss. <laughs> and the bastard died. And I was so happy because at this point I had died like 38 more times. I screamed at the top of my lungs and I'm pretty sure I deafened everyone in both streams. <laughs> but my god, I'm so glad I don't have to do that again. <laughs> because that was so awful. I had to die so many times before that clear was actually gotten. It was ridiculous. Have you I, um, tried the thing for your Guardian of the Green yet or not yet? I So we had actually stayed up like way later than we intended to to get I, that trial. And so yes. we're going to like probably this upcoming week. Okay. I, that, I was just curious if you had managed to get a chance to do it yet. Because just from my own perspective of watching you die <laughs> and struggle in there for so long, I stayed up that whole night watching how close you kept getting. And I'm like, there's no way that they haven't gotten this. This is insane. And... <laughs> It was the funny thing was, and Starfall sent me the message right after. I literally had to go to bed because I had to work the next day. And I was like, oh my God, good luck. I hope to hear that you guys won in the morning. You cleared at the pole I left on. <laughs> so I was obviously the voodoo hex. Our tank, like, he said, okay, last pole. And, because he had to work. 
And then he died. And he's like, okay, I can't leave and this be my fault because I didn't dodge roll in time. So we're going to try it again. And this is last poll for real this time. And then I died. I'm like, oh, no, it's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> me and then that was the poll we cleared it on so it was like for real last poll that we actually cleared the thing okay. on I, I actually all- I actually want to interrupt now because oh <laughs> there are no no it's it's fine this is actually gonna gonna go at Lotus so we had a very pretty similar scenario we kept getting it down to 20% or so but between that 20% and 10% everyone is so like brain tired I guess yeah. At least one of us makes a mistake, and we die. It's right. hard not to, because the fight... So I learned from watching you guys do it compared to me doing <laughs> it. That fight is really long. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it is. Really long. So I it, did not it, realize how grueling that fight was, because time passes a lot faster when the threat of death is constantly <laughs> on you. <laughs> And the problem is, so it's, there is constantly like, you get a few seconds of break when the dragon is charging, but then right after that, there are AoEs, there are adds, there are stranglers, the dragon is breathing fire, oh. headbutting, doing the wing <laughs> slap. It's like chaos for five minutes straight, and then you get a few seconds of break again, and then it's. Mm-hmm. And we eventually got it to 7% as well. Um. And we were like, yes, focus on the boss. And then someone died, and then I died. Uh, I actually looked at the recording, and I got hit by four different things on the same frame <laughs> without stamina. Oh like, my, God. my stamina was at like 1.5%, and I freeze framed it, and I have the dragon br- dr- like dragon's fireball on me. I have Celine's green orb on me, and I have two of those rates throwing stuff at me, and they are on my character exactly on the same frame without having any stamina. So I died, and then we wiped at 7%. I immediately thought about Pixie, obviously. Anyway, we continued to do this. So Pixie, you said you cleared it, the run Lotus left. Yeah. And um, as, so we eventually got the hard mode clear, and it was fantasy. That feeling, seeing that stupid dragon laying dead on the floor <laughs> with his blue scales, it is an amazing yes. feeling. And as soon as we got the clear, and we were cheering and everything like that, and I gotta give a shout out to our team, Luna, Luna Spear. She also streams, by the way, a lot of Elder Scrolls Online, Trials, Dungeons, and things like that, twitch.tv slash Luna Spear. Uh, Jen, our DPS, and Kitsune, our DPS. Jen was on, like, two hours sleep. Uh, she still got up. And Kitsune was, at some point, she was like, I'm done with this. Because I would taunt <laughs> the boss. I would start the fight with taunting the dragon. And the dragon would still attack Kitsune, and she would die, and she was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> but we got the clear, because they pulled through so that I wouldn't be the only one on Tails who hasn't gotten the you know layer of marcelo card mode there I you will go say, is in chat as well but so solus and braun i told them in dm i was like listen guys i cannot lose this to arc i cannot be the <laughs> last post on tails to get this clear please 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 make this happen for me because i will never live it down like i'm already the only ad i'm already the only non-tank like please dear god help me with this and they pulled through so thank you guys and also azure who voluntarily sacrificed himself in his sleep even though he had no idea <laughs> what my true motivation was, which was beat Ark at this. Because, to be fair, Ar- Lotus beat us a long time ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was before it was an actual competition, though. I just did it from hearing about how <laughs> miserable it was. I was like, that sounds like a dungeon I haven't done yet. It's one of the three I need. So that was the only reason I did it. I, I wonder if it would have gone less smoothly had I had the pressure of like it being a competition as well. <laughs> <laughs> I am not gonna. I'm not gonna give you the window, Pixie. The best I'm gonna settle is for a tie, because you did get it before me, but you also had like ten tries at it. So look, 
I think you just both need to stream, do a co-stream, and you oh need to both have to tr race for Guardian of the Green for my entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, Lotus, you don't get to be entertained this week because, because here's what well, I kind of figured out. Hold on. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> look, look, this is, this is, I've gathered some data today. All right. So oh, no. the second we cleared layer of Marcelo card mode, Pixie was in our chat, okay? Yeah. And the second you left Pixie's chat, she cleared layer of Marcelo. <laughs> Today, I've heard you, Lotus, say the words, we are all out Mary Dominion during your stream. I see. <laughs> Okay, well, that's hold about on. As out of context is no, possible. no, 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 no. This is this is. <laughs> I'm liking where this is going. This is data. All right. This is this is all evidence to something. So, Pixie got her layer of Marcelo clear as soon as you left. I got my layer of Marcelo clear as soon as Pixie joined. You <laughs> said the words, "We are all Aldmeri Dominion here," and Pixie has a North character in Aldmeri Dominion. So I'm starting to think Pixie is in fact a spy, but actually for Nords spying on Aldmeri no. Dominion, and you are a spy spying for Aldmeri Dominion, hiding as a Nord. <laughs> So well, I don't know what my, to think, man. I don't know I what to see. think. My red Bethesda Days game shirt says otherwise, sir. <laughs> okay, I'm not. convinced. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, Have no, you Art, heard of the Art, high elves? Listen, listen. <laughs> Art, Art, no. No, no, no. Listen, I think he is secretly old Mary Dominion. I don't like any of this. Only if you are secretly of an Art Pact. Also loves Squars. Which, yes, they are a dark elf thing. I was but he say, does it to antagonize you, and we all know it because who all, who just what tank who wants to strike fear into the hearts of the enemies enough to pull their aggro to seem like that much of a threat would ride or, a derpy T Rex. <laughs> Or the he, derpy she's making a good point, Lotus. To lull them into a false sense of security. Like, I don't need to worry about this dude. What's he going to do? Look at this derpy thing. Well, it gently nuzzles him and then bam, right in the back of the head. That's not Nordic, though, Lotus. Like, faking <laughs> people in, and then like, smacking in the back almost, of the head. You know, I like this. Like I don't like it. I don't like it. With the Khajiit like and the whole, we're going to bring your moons back thing. Whenever they just knew the moons were going to come back. I don't like this. I, I, I think like you're onto something, Ark. You're a little nope. bit off. I'm still solidly in AD territory. I do have a Nord. She's AD. <laughs> but I, I do think Lotus is actually secretly on my side. He's also much nicer to me than you are. So true, true. Lo <laughs> I really do think Lotus is actually secretly AD. He well. also likes Kate Beckinsale. You well, can't say no to that. I mean, that's just... What is, do you, what do you have to say for yourself, special. Lotus? Because these, uh, are, these am... are serious foundings, you know? All right, so thank you, everybody. This is my last Tales of Tamriel. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to make it for the nearest window, and uh, I'm making a getaway. <laughs> Time to join the Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> Need to come back for both of you in your sleep. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't sleep, and neither does Ark. That's yeah. That's not fair. Ark's a robot, and, and I have a child. Oh, and yeah, and you don't get to sleep. Eat. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, I can't I'm even not robots. Well. What is happening here? Hold on. Well, you don't sleep. You're some type of. Nope. Ark is Wimmer Centurion. Confirmed. Yeah, I'm you're now Wimmer Centurion. So who's that's... robots radio then? Then. Who's oh, Tom? Oh no! Oh god, are it's you the same Irish. person? <laughs> He's also Altmer. <laughs> no, I don't like that. Uh, yeah. Wait, so does that mean we just somehow went from an all EP show to a part EP show to a now suddenly we just all got blamed for being AD? <laughs> all yes. in one fell swoop? That was my entire agenda. I can now retire. You fools! I, I see. You messed with the <laughs> natural order. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> This is it's this is like not how this was supposed war. to go. <laughs> this is why podcasts should generally just die at hundred episodes. We went too far. We've gone no, too we... long. 
<laughs> we flew yeah. far too close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness me. But yeah, Lotus, you are now in my... Uh, I mean, I did say this episode, man, you are you are going to get it, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to my life, Lotus. Hey. You're now on my team. Damn it. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't want to be classified as AD. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Well, you shouldn't have uttered the words, we are all AD here. That's your fault, man. Yeah. You said it live. That's that's on you. I really hope someone clipped it because I really want to hear the context. No, I'm going to just delete the whole VOD so that it won't <laughs> even have the word. You know what? I'm never going to say it so, so nobody can clip it here either. There'll be no utterance of those words. <laughs> Kiz US, UESP and Slaps only. I need you to do a secret mission for me very quickly. Slaps, I know you're also AD, so I really need you to go into Lotus of Doom's channel right now and clip that and send it to me ASAP. Followed Thanks. by ignoring all of that. <laughs> uh, all right, Pixie, what else? have you done or have we done <laughs> i was about to say i think yeah. you and i have the same deals because <laughs> we both cleared vet layer of mars law card mode yes. within days of each other i did do it first so how just the better Sorry. but i did it with less tries so <laughs> i, did the I naked want a dungeon dual stream where you fight to the death over guardian of the green <laughs> No, 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 Lotus, I mean, I wait your up. turn. You, you, you failed this week, so. Oh man! <laughs> let the let the victorious speak, okay? Oh man! <laughs> so another thing that Ark and I did was, so Solas Gaming is one of the champions of DCN, so he issued us a challenge with his Patreon reward. He did, and he said, "I want you guys to do a gearless dungeon run." And then we elected him to come with us as one of he our did. GDPS. Yes. Yes. We also had Starfall in games, volunteer as tribute. I don't know why he thought that was a good idea, but we brought <laughs> him along with us. And behind the scenes that Ark didn't know until it happened, I had been DMing Solas all day. And Solas apparently is on Team Pixie, even though I think he's Ebonheart packed, so I guess your own guys can't get it together, so... Yeah, what is I'll happening like, here? This is showing some real chinks in our armor, Ark. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot be turning against each other right now. <laughs> I was talking with Solus, and he was talking about like various ways to make this suck more. One of them was, <laughs> let's make Lotus bring a level 1 PC and a tune. You didn't respond to a DM. So I'm like, sweet, let's figure out something else to make this suck. And since I'm currently talking to you and Ark is asleep, let's make it suck for Ark specifically. And I was like, let's just run something really, really hard on the tank. And he's like, that Frost Vault? And I was like, oh, that's freaking perfect because I don't have that clear yet, which I had just announced during our vet Lara Marcelot card run. He's like, let's get you the bust. It'll be great. What like, made you think we would ever clear veteran <laughs> frost waltz with no gear pixie? No, I told I told Solace. I was like, listen, there's no way we're clearing this, but I would like to hear Ark's reaction when we surprise him with this dungeon. I was like, you would like this to be a surprise, yes? He's like, of course, don't tell anybody what we're doing. <sighs> Which that was the hardest secret I've kept in a long time. Okay, Probably can I pitch since... in at this point? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, initially, okay, we all set it all up, and since I'm in a time zone that is like seven, eight hours ahead of everybody, um, I was like, is, they were like, is, you know, 8 p.m. Solus's time, because apparently Solus is one hour behind Pixie, and 9 p.m. Pixie's time, okay for you, and I was like, okay, that's 5 a.m. for me. Because they mentioned two different time zones, and I immediately like thought about tails, so my time zone calculations got messed up. So I was like, oh yeah, that's 5 a.m. for me, that's good. Now the problem is, that's 4 a.m. for me, apparently. So I set my alarm to 3.40 a.m. and then 4 a.m. and then 4.05 a.m. and then 4.010. So I basically, set up a bunch of alarms all the way up to 420 because my thoughts were you know i would wake up at 420 at latest right and um and then i would have some time to you know wash my face grab maybe some snacks 
uh, get it together, things like that, get my bearings right, because I was already sleeping at like 2 a.m. So I would only have like two hours of sleep. I, al I also messaged Pixie saying, okay, when you go live, uh, start messaging me. So I would wake up because, you know, Pixie goes live at 3.30 a.m., um, for me, and then that would give me enough time to wake up and do the things until 5 a.m. when we would actually do the run. I woke up to my alarm at 4.05, and it was like, Ark, where are you? We are waiting on you. And I was like, ah, oh, damn. I miscalculated not everything. what I said. I actually just scrolled up to the DMs. Right, I said, wakey, wakey, time to die. <laughs> at Arkanir, at Arkanir, Elfie, Time to go. About to start the stream. Wakey, wakey. Sola says for every minute you're late is a minute I don't heal you. Also, keep <laughs> us waiting and I will bring back the A details background. To which I received the reply eventually. Oh, my time zones. I prep for 10 p.m. EST on my way. Smiley face. Right, okay. Because he was suddenly so, very scared. So I only registered... Solus says for every minute you are late is a minute I don't heal you because out of all of those, that's the only message that mentions me being late. And I was like, wait, it's four. We were aiming for five. So how am I late? Um, and there is 15 minutes between all the messages from Pixie and me actually waking up and seeing those <laughs> messages. So I was actually five minutes late. So what I did, because I because this room is air conditioned, right? Uh, so I'm sleeping here uh, throughout summer so far. Uh, so I just rolled over, crawled to my PC, opened it, crawled to, to the bathroom, washed my face, came back and sat down. And at the time, what I had in my mind was that while I was logging in and everything, I was thinking, okay, well, we'll probably do like, I don't know, veteran, like either normal DLC dungeon to get gear first uh, and then do something veteran or, you know, start with veteran Fungal Grotto, get some gear, then do, you know, one of the easier DLC veteran dungeons with that gear, get better gear and then try something more difficult. I logged in, I got invited to the party. I accept the queue thing, like you are queuing for, you know, you are queuing as a tank, do you accept? I accept it, and it's loading into veteran frost vaults, and I was like, what? <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? I'm like, Pixie and Solus. Yeah, well, <laughs> evil people. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I'm not ready for own. this. And then we roll into that, and everything just kills. It's, I <laughs> All right, you can Everybody continue. Just with accept it. us. <laughs> so, the first poll, first of all, I would like to say I'm a necromancer healer. My most powerful heals that I use as part of my general build are class heals. Only issue I'm running into is I keep running out of magicka because I can't heavy attack. I kept trying to heavy attack and just like slowly punching the <laughs> air, which was hysterical, just out mm. of like muscle memory at that point, but. All of my heals work. I just had to swap around a couple skills. I was fine. Ark was not fine. I was a not. A tank with no shield is not a tank. <laughs> and it was hysterical. So basically, <laughs> I, I thought... I thought, I didn't realize I would be that squishy without all my gear. Because, I mean, my, my NA tune is already like CP350. I don't even have all my champion points. And, um, and I have 250 plus ping. And I didn't have any gear, so I thought, okay, well, I mean, I have spiked armor, I have, like, igneous shields, bone shield, and things like that. I probably could survive. Um, so I use inner rage to taunt everything, and every single heavy attack, regardless of who's doing it, even those simple Durzogs, like the orc dogs, whatever they are. Um, orc dogs. <laughs> they just one-shot me. Unless I dodge roll. But the problem is I have so little stamina. I can only dodge roll for so long. So I just kept dying left and right. Because I would taunt everything. Like usual. With using inner rage. And then just die. And die. And die. And die. And die. And it just kept going. And then Solus thankfully found me a shield in one of the cards. Like in garbage. One of those, you know, shields that doesn't even give anything if you deconstruct them. 
So I put that on with a with a another trash dagger, and I was surviving a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's something worth noting, is he didn't even have a sword and shield, he had a shield and a dagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... You had a wooden plank and a dagger, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it wasn't even a rubidite shield, it was it ruby ash shield, it was a nightwood shield. Like oh CP my 140, God. yeah, it's... It was great. bad, man. <laughs> At 5am, on a Friday morning, where I've been up from the previous day because of work, I had to tank, well, try to tank, veteran Frostwalt getting smacked around like a ragdoll. It was fun, to be honest. Oh, I But guess. it was rough. <laughs> so, and now I kind of want to do it again. <laughs> I will totally go back in there with you because I still don't have that bust. But... What I do have is my pride, because I died the least amount out of anyone in that dungeon, not the damn healer. Wow. <laughs> I, that was an achievement of a lifetime for me, because I have a theory. So because I'm always squishy, I always have to be on top of my dodge roll game, and also just on top of just moving like a crazy person, period, end of story. I'm also a very twitchy healer, so where like <laughs> you'll be in like, vet cloud rest or something where you need to like kind of hold still a little bit sometimes it's probably helpful i'm just like moving back and forth back and forth back and forth and that really helps whenever you have no armor yeah we have no I just, defenses <laughs> i just wasn't dying because things just weren't hitting me and i was just the one who stayed alive the longest so i'm like this See, is you great. found your niche you just exactly. no gear runs <laughs> all my heals worked I wasn't dying. It was about the same easiness that I would normally die. <laughs> How far did you me. guys get? I don't remember because I was in a guild thing at the same time. All the way until first the just boss. first boss, yeah. Okay, all right. I didn't know if you ever ended up because you were you were fighting uh, the first boss when I was watching, but then, like I said, I got distracted, so I didn't know if you ever managed to chew through that guy no. uh, and get through the door. I figured there was no way you were going to be able to do the the the. the uh, like, if you do guy. it my way, like, progression style, start with a vanilla dungeon, then move to an easier DLC dungeon, and then move to, like, difficult one, maybe then we can potentially Get through do a couple. it. Yeah, if we had yeah. done, like, Vet Fungal Grotto, then normal White Gold Tower, then I'd have Spell Power Cure, mm -hmm. and then going into Vet Frost Vault. Oh, man. Well, yeah, not gotta... West, Wet Frost Vault again. Like, Wet Frost Vault <laughs> is... We couldn't clear it with our, with our full gear. So... <laughs> so that was not my fault. That, uh... That's just a the just like that there, stupid but... laser boss. <laughs> I was gonna say, that, that, that dungeon is at fault. I have yeah, never gotten that say... clear. No matter who I run with, or what gear I have on, the lasers don't normally kill me. It's usually the spheres. Ark taught me a oh, trick last night. Yep. Where, like, once you get to four of the lasers, like, they always go in the same direction per, mm -hmm. like, set. Mm -hmm. And that made it so much easier. Yep. Um, once you see two, you know where the pattern will continue. They won't make you backtrack yeah. because that could theoretically pin see you in and make it impossible mm -hmm. at points. So I do want to, like, shout out, shout out to Solus and Kinara. So Solus, of course, was the one who, like, started this whole challenge. <laughs> And he was walking us through mechanics, and it had been forever since I had been in there, so I obviously needed the reminder. And then also Kinara, that was his first time in that dungeon. Oh, ever. yeah. And he went straight first in time on in Red Frost with no gear. Vaults and no gear. Yeah, that's like, you don't get gear. He had never even done normal Frost Vault, so he had no idea what the mechanics were. It was his first time, because I also did not tell him what we were doing, because it was supposed to be a secret. So oh, he was just as surprised as Ark was. And so the fact that he stuck it out for as long as he did until we eventually, until I went to bed was amazing because he had no idea what was going on and he also had no gear. And then when we even gave him gear back, he still had no idea what was going on. And that dungeon on vet is brutal. Yeah. Like I said, I have never even cleared it on vet just because I haven't, I tried it a couple times. And I was like, Nope, you know what? I'm I'm good. I don't need this. Until There's a I lot of tough fights in that place, even if they do work right. 
No, yeah. I I always get to Laser Boss, and that's where oh, I get okay. my job. And the first time I got to Laser Boss, so this is only my second vet attempt at this. Um, the first time I got to Laser Boss, and repeatedly the two DPS that were with us would take turns DCing. And oh, then God. the dungeon started oh, bugging oh. out after a while, where Ouch. the laser would just shoot th straight through the boss. Yeah. And even if we were on the right side. The lasers, it. when it glitches, that is, it's frustrating and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, it, that first run, like, it was just, like, legitimate bad luck. The second time, we were doing stupid things. Our tank was underleveled. Our hmm. DPS had never been in there. So, but I will say we made some really good progress on that boss. And I do want to complete that hard, not that hard. Wait, I, mean, I, I am the tank the who was doing too. stupid stuff? No, I oh, said you okay. were under leveled. Oh, well, we I am under leveled on NA, stuff. so technically. We were all doing what level stupid are you stuff. On because we were CP380, I think. Okay, I so theoretically you could at least queue in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no the stupid stuff was us going in there with no gear on yeah that's oh, that's yeah. not gonna lie that's not the most efficient way to get your uh bust and pet out of there because <laughs> you get I a pet say, as well yeah i i learned that after we started frosty spider but i i will say that I am not scared to die many, many, many times because I have gamified it with my death counter. So mm. the higher that number goes, the more satisfied I am with myself. So <laughs> it's fine regardless if I clear it or don't clear it. And I just had an all around good time. There were many inappropriate jokes made. Oh <laughs> God, yeah. The innuendo, oh my. Oh my. <laughs> We were not good people. <laughs> we were not. <laughs> we were we were like like uh oh I forgot the name. Like middle school children just making oh, jokes. Those runs. Yeah. Those yeah. runs. We, we devolved Quality. into thirteen year olds as one of the clips on my channel. <laughs> Excellent. Pointed out. So like Ark mentioned, he was late. So the first thing out of my mouth the second he joined Discord was take off your clothes and get your ass in here. Yeah. <laughs> and I went like, take your tunes clothes off, get your ass mm -hmm. in here. Late, let's go. Of course, that was just clipped. And that was Yeah, great. I was yeah. going to say, not in context, wildly out of context. <laughs> and then I was like, trying to find a way to fix my Magicka region problem because I had no gear and no resto staff and so i was like do you guys have orbs can you just throw them constantly to which solas replied sure i'll put your ball i'll put my balls oh, in your face that's right that <laughs> yeah he didn't he didn't let that one go but in his defense you didn't call them orbs you called them healy balls so healy balls yeah that's, that's i always call them healy balls yeah well that's, that's just so my name for them like he, he, you can't just let that one go. <laughs> now I call them Healy Balls as well, and it makes our, our dungeon team laugh. I have heard those from multiple people. Yeah, it's catching I'm up. So glad. Yes. And so there was one time, it was actually in, God, what's that dungeon? Vet Moon Hunter Keep. And it was like 2 a.m. whenever I said it, and I saw someone's Twilight Matriarch. And could not for the life of me remember the word matriarch, and I called it the Healy Flap Flap. And I've legitimately <laughs> heard people call it the Healy Bird and Healy Flap Flap since. Great. <laughs> oh, I mean, goodness me. It's also pretty bad that if you yelled out, quick, I need the Healy Flap Flap, I would know exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, true. But at the same time, it is ridiculous sounding <laughs> i mean listen but i would immediately assume it's like oh someone needs exactly. a matriarch <laughs> exactly so healy balls and healy flap flap you don't have to think for a second of what i'm talking about yeah. but if i say energy orbs you're gonna be like wait which which ones the blue ones or the yellow ones and which orbs are we talking about no healy balls give me the damn healy <laughs> balls end of story it's done i get the, <laughs> the stuff that i need true true i'm really really surprised that since both of them had mystic orbs that we didn't have blue balls jokes <laughs> i'm going to be honest i was shocked 
<laughs> I didn't. You're probably joke, overloaded from before. the previous jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Maybe you that's didn't get down the line far enough. I was waiting for it, and it never happened, and I was not going to be the one to make that joke. But yeah, you really took the high road on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I figured since I started the whole, like, uh, high schooler thing that I should probably just keep my mouth shut and let everybody take it from there. But it was hilarious. That run was so much fun. And it's, like, really hard to convince ARC, period, to come on to NA. There have been... That's my third time ever playing with Arcaneer. The first what's, time... What's your ping on there, ARC? Just 350 and above. Ooh. <laughs> The first time, I can't remember what I dragged you into the first time, Art, but you came on to help me with something. I it think was some, it wasn't something as struggle bus. I I don't no. remember what we did. I mean, I, I don't remember what it was either. There was there's the Cyrodiil that I tried attacking you, and there's just the six time. people just nuked me down. <laughs> um, I don't remember the first, the first one. It was something dungeon, but. Yeah, because you did... tanked for me, but I don't okay, remember Okay, Kinara it says we did Banish Cells to Veteran Hard Mode. There we go. That oh, may there have been we go. it. That was, that, was a, that was a difficult time, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, yeah, that, that, that doesn't sound good. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was the, only, the third time I've actually played with Ark. So I'm like, okay, I have to be on the top of my game to speak for healers everywhere. And I feel <laughs> like I did a pretty good job of that. Because I died significantly less times than he did. Yes. How many times did you die, Arganeer? A lot. So <laughs> basically, my problem was <laughs> my lot. my problem was okay. My EU character is fully set up. Like, in, uh, I am not the best tank, but I I consider myself a very high grade tank. Um, I can take a lot of beating. I can do most of the mechanics. I can just shield up all the way to taking 100k damage to the face and surviving. So my muscle memory is built around that. So when I was tanking with Frost Waltz on NA, all the bosses and adds that my muscle memory believes that I can just take the hit from one shots me. Uh, I'm like, oh, hey, I have 80% health, which means I can take that, you know, uppercut. No, no, I can't. I am not max resistance and I don't have 45k health on EU. I just die. And then they res me. I'm like, okay, I got this. I got this. I got uppercut, die. Uh, like an orc came by, swings at me, I die. Because all those attacks, I don't bother dodge roll on EU. Like, I can just take them t and and not die, but that's not the case on NA, so I was dying left and right, left and right, left and right, until I got the hang of it, um, except my squishiness, I guess. So, yeah, I died. The problem was not your healer, though. You can admit that, right? Hmm? Your problem was not your healer. Oh, no, not this time. You can't heal what is dead. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted you to necroize it back up. <laughs> yeah, I but did. I did. It is still your necro. fault for bringing me there, so I can still blame <laughs> you for something. I can show you the DM where it was Solus's idea, and I just didn't turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I blame Solus. Speaking of blaming DPS, that leads me to the last <laughs> thing that happened to me this week. I need to start out with an apology. Um, so I was guesting on Scroll Talk, uh, which is a brand new ESO podcast. I was on episode number five for them. We were talking, we were having a discussion about what it's like to be a female streamer on Twitch and like certain things you deal with in the MMO space and just in general. And I was talking about a troll recently that had visited my channel who came in and was like, of course you're a healer. You're a girl, blah, blah, blah. All girls are healers. And it's just being a jerk. And I was joking around. And it ended up like with the origin story of why I switched from DPS to healing. Because my first tune ever in ESO was a DPS. A very bad DPS, but mm -hmm. a DPS nonetheless. So... <laughs> 
I had said, you know, in a, in a dungeon group, you have two DPS and one healer. I wanted to feel important, so I went healer because there's only one of them, which is half the number of DPS that you need. And then my Discord listened to it and decided <laughs> to take that as DPS are expendable. I don't think DPS are expendable, <laughs> but that is the way it has been spun. So now I have become the anti DPS Twitch streamer. And that is what has been going on. So four healer runs. <laughs> oh no, just, just wait. <laughs> so I also have a Sork who hit level 45. I'm, I was like almost to 50. I was like, I would just like to have one of each roll to 50. Because I have two healers at 50. I have a tank at 50. I don't have any DPS at 50. Well, now I do, but we're getting to that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I would like to just go ahead. Like I, I have two that are like close to the same level in the 40s. I have my night blade, which I have my stand blade and I have my um, pet sork. And I like my pet sork more. So let's get my pet sork to 50. So... Wandering Bard, Kiz UESP, and Ishi Streams decided to help me accomplish this goal tonight. So we queue up. Bard has been very vocal in his disagreement with what I said on Scroll Talk. He also has only heard somebody else's side of the story where I said DPS are expendable, which is not what I meant. To be fair, the host of Scroll Talk, Noble, said, yes, healers are an essential service, and I didn't refute this. Uh, apparently, taken in that context, it means I said DPS are expendable, whatever. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't mean to imply that. There also was a, it was a situation with my mod where one of my mods, Lego, is my tank. And he said that DPS are just soul gems because that's what they are in dungeons. Wow, harsh. And then he set some DPS activist roles as soul gem society in my Discord. I like that. Oh Wait, which God, which mod that was that? That was Lego. Lego. Oh, oh Lego. my God. See, that's see. hilarious. When someone's a tank, you know they are awesome. Except Lotus this week because he failed. But um. oh man, <laughs> Lotus the failure. Damn it. Uh, so it was now Bard is a bad ass DPS. <laughs> He is on the Lore Seekers trial team with me. He murders things. Anytime he comes into dungeons with me, he just melts everything. I have never once said anything derogatory intentionally towards DPS. This is just something that just kind of happened. And now there is this whole rebellion in my Discord with a whole bunch Rightfully of DPS so. who suddenly think no, who suddenly think that I said something derogatory against DPS that I didn't say. And so the Soul Gym Society has formed. <laughs> and their rebellion started tonight. Look, all so I know, Gems all I know is that you upset Bard. And then while he was laying down sad in a corner, you also took screenshots <laughs> of him. And then you scolded Shh. him for playing a loot no. in the dungeon, <laughs> being a Bard, who he is. You scolded him for who he is, and took screenshots of him, and upset him. No. So yes. what happened was... Bard, by the way, Wandering Bard, is the actual... He is the one who created our outro song, The Red Diamond. So that is who the amazing guy who created that, upset by Pixie, for just for being a DPS. Just for being a mm -hmm. DPS. So rude, rude. And then to they say why? Give more context, <laughs> to actually give more context, what happened was we ran through a couple of normals. I was like level 48, had a little bit more to go. One of the pledges was white gold tower. It's like, I can do normal white gold tower. Come on. We were doing four DPS. <laughs> so everything was just dying because Bard does just an insane amount of damage. So we. We go in there, first boss, Bard faces 
the wall. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what you doing, man? We need you. <laughs> Just, no. Nonviolent nope. protest. And then he lays down. So I'm like, well, Bard's just going to pout. And I take screenshots. He's going to pout. He laid down so perfectly. Like, his character just... You know, there, there, there was a pillar, and his character just, like, faced the pillar laying down, like, sort of creating a triangle. His face, like, at the edge. And just laying down, like, back turned towards the center of the room. It was perfect. So, I was like, Bart, listen, no, I, I didn't mean anything that was said. I, I really need you. Oh, also, let's back it up a little bit. So, I was in Fungal Ground of 1, was only pulling like 11 to 13k DPS on like anything. It was like really sad. And Solus Gaming pops in chat and is like trying to help me with my rotation. I'm like, I don't know what any of these skills are or what they do. And then Solus is like, oh no, I'm. I, this is why I, I didn't want to help because I didn't want you to get confused. I'm like, thanks. Now I feel stupid. But now it's like, no, 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 I need the help. Please come back. He said he was going to WoW instead and deleting his ESO account. So I managed to really offend like all of the DPS <laughs> on accident. So Solus <laughs> comes back eventually. And he tells me what rotation I should be doing to really help because I was using like all of the wrong skills apparently. Yeah. So I start trying to do this. I'm doing it very badly because it's just so many buttons in a very particular order. I'm used to healing where yes, I have lots of buttons. I use all of my skills as a healer on both bars, but it's like, a situational based things like there are some things that are kind of on a rotation but there are some that are like very much substituted in based on the situation so i just get in like this groove whenever i'm healing i don't have that established whenever i'm dpsing i don't understand rotations hmm. and they were like telling me the difference between light attack then skill versus skill mm -hmm. then light attack and i'm like why is there a difference this is ridiculous yeah wait there's and a difference <laughs> There is a yeah, difference. I, as is. I've been learning on Guaranir for like trial DPS oh, and stuff like that. That's yeah, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Bringing up the fact that I had a bad night. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> enjoy that. I'm not going to a show without Guaranir reference. Um, and I actually think it's one of those things where it's muscle memory. So I'm trying to remember how I click buttons. I think it was. It's light attack skill is what I was having an easier time with as opposed yeah. to skill, light attack, skill, light attack. It was light attack, skill, light attack, skill that I had an easier time with as I'm learning. I'm still a mediocre DPS, so don't really take How too much of what different? I say to How is it any different? So I actually have an answer because yeah, so they told me in chat. So light attacks always have the same animation. So you know when you can cast a skill after a light attack to cancel that light attack animation, whereas skills have varying animations and it's harder to cancel those skills with the light attack. Yeah, but... I still don't completely understand because you're still, like, hitting the light attack after a skill at some it's, point. It's, but apparently it only matters for the first time, though. Well, it's... So you also need to account... So one of the things... Um, th this, is, this is super simplified because I do not play DPS, really. This is, So this is, like... Baby DPS 101 from me trying to explain what I do, which is I needed to make clicky motions with my hands to figure out on the controller <laughs> what I did in order. So, like, don't take what I'm saying with too much of uh, a, a heavy hand here. But so one of the things is it, it's the rhythm of getting yourself into the uh, canceling. So you're focusing on one or the other. The other thing is you're timing with the skill going in um you can animation cancel by bar flipping as well mm -hmm. and i was screwing up my cancellation on a bar flip because i was doing it the other way around and i didn't have the timing right so it starts your rotation it ends your rotation theoretically for a bar one way i really sucked at it the other way i was mediocre at it so i went with the way that i was mediocre at it and went from there and that's how i sort of was practicing when i was messing around with it right or theoretically you could just run around spamming light attack because people love when you do that in pox <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> no I skill, only trying. light attacks. I was actually trying. I was doing about 13% of the damage. And Bard was doing nothing because he was pouting in a corner. <laughs> because I said a thing that was misconstrued as a bad thing. He wasn't pouting. He was being a Bard. No, he, he was started playing off the pouting, loot. And then he played the loot. Like, later. Like, the first boss bowl, he was laying down in the corner. He took a nap. And then he... the second one, he played the loot. <laughs> and that's what he did the rest of the time. The second time around, I did manage to convince him to please help, and I'm so sorry. So for any DPS out there who has heard my guest appearance on Scroll Talk, or even if this is the first time you're hearing about this, I don't think you're expendable. I can't do damage. You guys press too many buttons too quickly, and it's too much for my tiny little brain to process, especially when <laughs> I talk Twitch chat. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I don't know what I'm doing whenever it comes to DPS. Obviously, I need you. Thanks. Love you guys. <laughs> Appreciate you. You're not just soul gems to me. That was my mod. Blame Lego. That was a very nice, heartfelt that was very apology, sincere. Pixie. That was yeah. To all my heartfelt. DPS friends, y'all nothing without me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See? So everybody hate on here. You can leave Pixie alone now. It's fine. <laughs> So tanks are really the salty ones. It was Lego and Arcanir who decided to relegate you guys to the Soul Gym Society. There I is just one, had there's one DPS up. I want to exclude from this, Kitsune, because she somehow, she's a she's a freaking ninja. She she's somehow type. doesn't crazy. die. <laughs> she She's like, all of us are dead. Jen is dead. I am dead. Luna is dead. Kitsune is alive. Kitsune is typing and Kitsune is not dying. She is so hacks. freaking good at dodging yep. everything. That seems like literal hacks because that fries my brain trying to think of doing all of that at it's the same like time. Things that kill all of us in very short time, we just die and watch Kitsune survive everything for like 20 seconds. And I'm like, <laughs> how is, what is going on here? Real life magic. Yeah. Every other DPS though, you know, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so to end my tales, my first DPS on PCNA is now level 50. This is the first DPS I've gotten to level 50 since I was on Xbox, which I was also on PlayStation after Xbox. So it's been a long time. It's also wow. a pet sork. So I, I've gone back to pet sork. Somehow I've just made it full circle. It's not going to be my main. I actually enjoy tanking more than DPSing because it just feels more natural. I oh, I skipped over that. I, that's not wrapping up my tales. I like all <laughs> of you. I'm sorry my tales are so long. I was like really into ESO this week. Apparently, I didn't <laughs> no, that works for me. That. Unless but, I need to yeah, look at myself on editing. <laughs> we are we are delaying the inevitable Lotus failure. But oh man, what? Oh, <laughs> you cannot Listen. escape Lotus. We finally have something to pick on you about. So, <laughs> I also, apparently this was just challenge week, because I had the Vet Layer of Mars Lock hard mode, the DPS leveling, which DPS is apparently the hardest thing in the world for me. And then I was also challenged to take my tank, who is level 50, and poorly geared, into Vet March of Sacrifices. And I had a freaking blast. First of all, I died about 40 times. But I learned a lot of things, like divide the Tarser fight into quadrants, and also that you actually do need to synergize with the Wisp, because apparently it had been a while since I had been in there, and apparently standing next to the Wisp while the Wisp is in your quadrant is not enough to actually help out in any sort of way. And that when people come and try to help you because you're doing nothing, it will <laughs> drop you because they got too close. And if you try to run them out of your quadrant by screaming, get off my lawn, essentially like an old lady, it just makes you look stupid. And I also learned that that hard mode, not something that I should attempt, especially since I only have Eben on one bar <laughs> and I have Torx packed on the other bar. 
Don't forget Earth my trick. Core. You can kill those DPS if you get real good at it. <laughs> oh, I attempted that, but I meant to kill the <laughs> DPS anyway because I just didn't taunt things. So that was also nice. That's an easier way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Less subtle, but... <laughs> <laughs> so I actually learned in the fight, I think it's the second boss, the boss with all the fire, and then he switches to the ice and the electric, that dude. I oh. didn't realize that I could, so I'm a warden, so I don't, I switched off of Silver Leash because I got better with Frozen Device, but I essentially didn't know that I could chain the ads in, so they were just like, melting the dps and the mm, healer yeah. <laughs> and I, I i would ask i'd be like do i need to do anything different because i like hold the boss over to the side he's like then the boss can't hurt people i'm just gonna hold him over here no big deal because i it's been forever since i had even ran that one on my healer so i didn't like pay attention to tank mechanics and so i was just like holding him over by some waterfall because it seemed like a nice spot to just chill and I was doing fine staying alive for a really long time. I would drop my trees down. It was a good time. But then the DPS would all die and then I would die. And I was like, is there something else I need to be doing? Do I need to like inner fire them? Is there anything that you guys need from me? They're like, no, no, no. You're doing a good job. Just keep chilling over there with the boss. Come to find out I need to hold the boss in the middle and also bring all of the ads into the middle because that makes it significantly easy on the DPS. So I, I was told in chat, like, Pixie, chain the bot, chain the ads. I was like, well, I can't chain them, but I can try to frozen device them and see if that helps. I pulled everybody into the middle and we cleared it that time. I was like, nice. wow, come to find out we were blaming all of this on the DPS not getting ads down fast enough. It was really your tank just not doing their job. Mm -hmm. And so then we continued on. Everything was fine through the ad pulls until Tarser. Tarser was a nightmare and a half. It didn't help that my... Whenever I mentioned the old lady get off my lawn comment, I had phrased it in such a way that it became a sexual innuendo somehow because it involved. Of course. <laughs> that's just apparently the theme for the weekend. And I mean, we so are on Twitch. Was, yeah, it was 30 minutes of giggles because we're all very immature and it was just really funny. And. So after the giggle stopped and I was actually able to tank again, we did eventually clear that one. Um, Kiz was actually necro healing. So I was like, oh my God, I can actually help you help me here because I know that I need more heals on me because I'm just not tanky enough. And so then I taught Kiz the beauty of blast bones on a healer, which is something <laughs> that a lot of healer builds say not to do but it puts a corpse exactly on your tank because the boss is on your tank. So if you launch a blast bones at the boss, there's going to be a corpse right there on your tank, and then you can drop your big AoE heal over time, and you're good to go. And then we cleared that one. That's and a clever I told, strategy. Yeah. I actually really enjoy that strategy. I don't yeah. use it for trials. I do use it for dungeons, and it works out really well. It also like contributes a little bit to DPS, so it makes me feel a little bit less useless in dungeons. But it does like if I'm trying to keep focus heals on the on the tank, I can throw out a blast bone to whatever the tank is focusing, which is usually the boss. There is a corpse right on him. I can purge everything off the tank and get a nice AOE heal on the tank, and it lasts a while. And I just keep that going for, and it really makes things really useful. Um. So then we get to the last boss. We did a few hard mode pulls and those didn't go well because I had no idea what I was doing. I was just running around like a mad woman clockwise and apparently that's not what I was supposed to do. Also, that boss does not telegraph well when he wants to charge, either that or I'm just blind. <laughs> also possible. Eventually we did clear it on non-hard mode though and so that was actually like a really big achievement for me. That's the second vet dungeon I've ever cleared on my tank that I can remember, at least vet DLC. The first one being vet scale color peak. I was heavily coached through both dungeons by my tank. Uh, for vet scale color peak, my tank was actually healing me because he was <laughs> previously a healer main. And then this time he was in Twitch chat giving me tips the entire time. And I've been told I need heroic slash before I do anything else. Dumb. So that's my tales. 
that was it was actually a really fun week i had a blast in eso this week i could tell i was gonna say yeah, that was very entertaining <laughs> you conquered all sorts of stuff i feel like i had a lot of success this week unlike you lotus oh man it's, it's, oh the yeah constant so jab. Um, I, I mean i need to fail less <laughs> Uh, my tales were kind of merged with pixies anyway, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna go into more details. So, <laughs> Lotus. Also, it's like uh, it's getting late more and more. I'm sorry, uh, I was so, worried about a lot no, of no, things. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> no, people, you're good. People love three hour shows. Um, so, yeah. Lotus, what have you been trying to do this week in ESO? Okay, so I guess since we keep. <laughs> Ripping on my uh, my not success, um, especially since I had a pretty straightforward time with Marcelock, which I've been able to smugly be like, well, at least I'm done with that. Maybe we can work on doing more uh, with that. Well, instead, we decided, as opposed to trying to work on, I think it's called Nature's Wrath, which is the trifecta, um, mm. which, man, trying to squeeze that time trial into that hard mode is looking to be very difficult but uh instead during quakecon which we mentioned i uh was invited to join the quakecon um stream team for the event as part of the land party like uh which was kind of neat and you just kind of stream anything that is a bethesda game and um some things are doing giveaways i had some that was provided by zoss and gina bruno so um, I figured let's try to do something challenging and we'll tether everything to that. And what I decided to do, uh, especially after he hearing your tales and mentioning this was the previously before Marcelock, the only two attempt dungeon you had mm -hmm. where it took two days to do, we decided to go in and tackle Moongrave Fane and go for the challenger achievement. Um, and I was going to do a giveaway at each one of the challenges we could do. And the goal was hopefully I could give away all three things, but I was like, well, we got to at least give away some of this stuff. So we went straight into hard mode right out the gate. And shortly after our initial pull, which I don't know how many it was because it was a long thing, we got the boss down to 6.2% health. <laughs> At which point, I forget who dropped, but the issue was we all had the blood pillars uh, that we had to go to. Yeah. And I got hit with a Horrivore and debuffed and had the pillar, plus I had the add homunculus <laughs> and the thing. I was like, oh no. But it was so close to death, we thought we might be able to save it. I could not. That was too many bleeds. I turned into a pile <laughs> of goo. I was done for. And unfortunately, trying to kite and do 6% damage wasn't going to happen. Um, we had several more pulls after that where we were sub 20% as well. And it started to kind of get daunting because, like I said about your guys' run, where I didn't realize how long that Marcelock hard mode fight is until I watched <laughs> yeah. you both do it. Oh my god, that <laughs> that hard mode takes forever in in yeah. Moon fifteen million hit points. Like, are you <laughs> for real? <laughs> that fight just keeps going and going and going. Um. So, at the I think it was the two hour mark. We had dropped. The, the thing is, I don't get to, uh, I didn't actually keep track of the deaths, but um, one of the things that was kind of funny was I did notice how, how many soul gems I was like going through or whatever. <laughs> and when you would think you're at something for two hours, you'd be like, oh man, you probably died like a ton of times. However, <laughs> the fight is so long. <laughs> yep. I actually only think we died in the ballpark of 20 to 30 times total in two hours <laughs> because I still had nearly a full stack. And I was like, oh, but every pull is at least five minutes. Like, it is a long, long fight. And at that point, 
we had a bunch of polls that I said were were sub 20. We had that one, our best poll was 6.2. And I was like, okay, we're halfway through my designated stream time. I don't want to not be able to like try to give away prizes. But let's let's clear our heads. We'll we'll go through and see how we can do the dungeon otherwise. So we went back to the beginning and we blitzkrieged through. We mm. got the speed run. Then we did the no death. We did not get them both at once. We did it one, then the other. We had one stray death um, from kamikaze in. But we got the speed run. We got the no death. Uh, so we got to give away some prizes. We did not get the hard mode, so we have to go back in for that because this one will take us a second try as well, it looks like. Um, oh, man, that hard mode is... <laughs> there's a lot going... It, it's just the mechanics are actually like pretty controllable, but at the end, oh my God, they get, there's so many things happening all at once. And the big thing that's a problem was that the homunculuses that come up mm -hmm. with their shield. Yeah. Yeah they were not in sync with the bat at all. No, we they are never. Trying... That's the problem. You have it... to look around to see if they freaking spawned so you can yes. taunt them. But they taunt, they spawn with a delay. So it's like, <sighs> They do, and, like, I couldn't tell if we were overburning, so I tried, like, staggering a li little bit. I... I'd... Oh, yes, and homunculi would be the t correct term for homunculi. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the best way to say that. I know, because it's like, it's not homun... It's, yeah, it's not like gooses, it's geese. <laughs> it's homunculi. Um, but yeah, so, tough run. We, we got super close. I'm really eager to go back in there, which... Um, we didn't do it on stream because that was where we ended the stream after we got the other things. We did a quick one because I felt bad that we couldn't. We could only give away two of those. So I, I, I actually had them labeled um, as hard mode coin, speed run coin, <laughs> and um, no death coin. And since we did two of them, I was like, well, I did type this r vague, and I feel bad keeping it. And it's a it's a fun event, so. <laughs> We did the pledge hard mode just so I could say that we did a hard mode so I could give it away too, uh, which was White Gold Tower, which we, I think we did White Gold Tower. We just tried to do it as quick as possible. And I think we did it in like 14 minutes or something like that. So it was like, <laughs> hey, we can give this away too. So we did that no death speed run hard mode, which we, we made up for the fact that we could not complete the other hard mode. Um, uh, so yeah, Pixie, is... you have Moongrave Fane hard mode, right? Yeah. No? No, I no. I think clear, but I don't have the hard mode. I've never tried yep. it. You are currently the only hard mode clear arc. <laughs> My entire plan... I, I asked you this before, and I thought you said <laughs> yes. I thought no, no, I was going to... Like my entire plan was teasing Lotus because he wasn't he was the only one without the <laughs> Moon Grey Fane hard mode clear. Tease him. I haven't failed it because I just haven't tried it. Uh, yeah, that's so not that is that. <laughs> no, I need okay, hold on. Let me You are safe let again. Let me defend myself. No no no. He's not safe. <laughs> because I did the more true Mooncrave Fane hard mode because the last time I made a serious attempt at anything in Mooncrave Fane was Extra Life Day last year. And I had the Wheel of Pain as a <laughs> donation reward. I love that wheel. It was fantastic. One of the rewards, punishments, rewards, I don't know what it actually is, uh, was Healer Tank, where I had to inner fire the boss God. as the healer. So, And we still cleared that dungeon that night. So I think I cleared the real hard mode, let's be honest. No, <laughs> no. You will that, know that, once you play. Because oh my God. it is that, a second layer of martial arts. I still haven't decided if Moon Grey hard mode was more difficult or rather, like vice versa, then uh, Layer of Marcelloc. So, both are terribly struggle. Like, it's... <sighs> Let's so just say that they are set out both tough, but my thing is... Now, granted, I also haven't completed um, Moongrave, 
but having cleared Marsalock on hard mode more than once, I actually think Moongrave is probably just the it's the execute phase area is so much more chaotic where I don't feel like Marsalock is just universally difficult. <laughs> the beginning of Moongrave, I think, is easier. And then the execute phase is yeah. more chaotic, I guess, would be the way I would put it. And shockingly, it's even longer <laughs> than, than Marsalock. Because what does Marsalock have? 13 million hit points? 12? Well, he has a lot of hit points and you can't damage him all the time because most of the time you are trying to avoid stuff uh, yes. or kiting bats or trying to aim that orb of thing. You know, the boss is invulnerable. Right. There's fire everywhere. Everything is the same color, so you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. It's but Moongrave yeah, Fane the is rough. control in Moongrave Fane is just, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it is... It is savage, but yeah, so we'll be going back to smash that later. Um, but yeah, I was going to say, so we got two of the three. Hopefully by next show, I can have the hard mode cleared and we can uh, start work on uh, Frost Vault, mm -hmm. which the thing I was saying after stream where we were just like, oh, let's do something just to like do something. We actually decided to just run Frost Vault because I... I'm not going to lie. I think I've only completed Frost Vault. Um, we were trying to figure out exactly. From beginning to end, I think I've only beaten that dungeon three times on VET uh, because I don't like going in there because <laughs> I have a lot of issues with errors and weird things. And we went in and we got the speed run on our first try. <laughs> so Frost Vault's not a tough speed run. You'll be fine with that when you try that one. Uh don't know what that hard mode was. We didn't trigger that. So I've literally never seen that hard mode still. No death is also going to be a dicey one in there just because all of those fights are. Yeah. Yeah. They're no joke. Like, they're really... They're, other than that first fight, that that is some intense stuff in there. But, um, yeah, so that was my... Uh, that was my... 66% success rate <laughs> but I was not able to do the uh, all the challenger achievements and it hurts me deeply um, the other thing that I did from well actually there's one other ESO thing that I have which is super random but it was just funny because I wanted to mention it <laughs> I was doing uh, treasure maps to try to get leads and when I was in, uh, I think it's Grotwood. It's either Greenshade or Grotwood or Malabatar. One, one, somewhere in uh, Valenwood. I don't remember which zone exactly I was in at the time. There is a quest called the Tangled Web for mm -hmm. anybody who might not have done it. And it's about a group of mercenaries and all this stuff. I'm not going to go too, too much into it. But part of this quest is drugging the mead of the mercenaries so that they'll pass out and they won't be on their posts. Yeah. And the trick is to walk. Uh, so, so there are these, the mead guards, I guess. I don't know. It's like the mead brewers. Well, for whatever reason, they're walking around and you have to break their line of sight so you can poison their mead. <laughs> um, and if, if they catch you, they're like, oh, you know, blah, 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 cut your hand off, keep your hands out of there, that's not your mead, something like that. So you have to try again. I don't know if it bugged out or what was going on, but I was walking through this area and there were a bunch of people over on this one mead barrel, <laughs> like a bunch of people. And at first my thought is, oh, it's bots. They weren't bots, they were people. In fact, I recognize some of the names from like PVP and stuff like that. I'm like, well, I know these people. And the guy is just constantly being like, get your hand out of there, get your hand out of there, get your hand out of there. So I go over to try to just see if I can interact with it, and I can, and it says, get your hand out of there. So I type in zone, uh, what is up with this guy? To which everybody responds, I don't understand. He's guarding the mead barrel rather than walking on a route. <laughs> So he's never oh leaving the quest. He's just staring at the objective so you can't complete it. 
So <laughs> I tried to see if I could murder them for them uh, and I would just deal with the bounty. I could murder all of the guards, but not the guy who was staring at the barrel <laughs> for whatever reason. He, he's not interactable, so I couldn't I couldn't help them. So I went to make invisibility potions for them so they could try to do it that way. And what we ended up doing was people scattered to all the different mead barrels and tried just clicking them all at once. And it turned into a group effort of poisoning the mead because (laughs) no one could complete the quest in the zone at the moment. That's amazing. Yeah, which was pretty funny because eventually the they kept trying to go to each other's thing to say, stop, you know, stop poisoning the meat. Mm -hmm. But because so many people at so many barrels were doing it at the same time, they kept turning to try to like claim, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And eventually they all clicked at once so that they got their meat finished. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it, it was funny. And it was just, it was something that I thought was neat to just see a group of people working together for something just in zone, nobody was grouped. Like it was just everybody was trying to do the same thing at the same time. And for whatever reason, that quest happened to just be running at, at I don't know, interest wise to a lot of people at that moment. So it was just funny to watch. Um, but the other thing I did, which was what a lot of people hung out with me on last weekend, right after the show, was I streamed more arena To which you can consider this a a win or a fail because I'm playing arena. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I went into the Halls of Colossus and I said that I am going to beat the Halls of Colossus all at once. I had a long period of time where I didn't need to do anything. Uh, Four hours and change, I think it took me (laughs) straight to beat the Halls of Colossus, meaning I am one half of the way through the game. I only have four of the staff pieces after all of this. <laughs> um, but I really, I got my death counter working, which I was super excited about, but then I was sad for a long time. Not that I wasn't dying, but that I wasn't really getting to use it. Cause for like three hours of the stream, I was just crushing everything. Holes of Colossus was really not that difficult for a while for some reason. And then Once I collected all the keys, um, you have to get eight, no, six keys. It's like a gold key, amethyst key, uh, I don't know, an iron key, a rock key. I don't Mm -hmm. don't know. There are a bunch of keys. For some reason, there are two amethyst keys, um, which I thought was weird. (laughs) And I'm like, well, that's. That's kind of strange. They couldn't come up with a different color. No, there's six other keys. There's just <laughs> two amethyst keys. There are seven also, keys for six doors. <laughs> one key is facing the wrong direction in the little sprites. One key is facing the wrong direction. It took me forever to pick up the damn keys because the sprite boxes <laughs> are a nightmare. Um, and one of the keys looks very very suggestive of not being a key and it was very awkward um but yeah so i get the keys i'm thinking cool i'm through so i go through the doors there's like a just a wall of doors you have to go through and it's just one after another after another and the puzzle the riddle doors that i've made reference to they all have riddle doors there's so many riddle doors in the halls of colossus chat and I worked through some of them. Um, One of them is garbage. Uh, That's, it's not a riddle. It's garbage. The math Uh, one? So I, uh, I actually, let's see. I will read the exact one just because I believe I have it handy. Um, Yeah, all right, here it is. I'm going to read this riddle, and I want to see if anybody has any gauge to what the answer to this is because it is bullshit. <laughs> and so I, will... I obviously Googled this one, so I'm not yeah. going to say yep. anything. Right. So I'm curious. The riddle door, I am twice as old as three times the age of the Sphinx of Gazia, Agamanus, divided by one-ninth the age of the Sphinx of Canis, Ignon, who left this world 26 years ago 
What is my age? Did, did Vivek write these? What the hell kind of riddle Okay, repeat, that? repeat. Hold on. I need to hear it again. Okay, you need to hear it again? Or yes. This? All right, hold on. We got, all right. Uh, so here, here's, here's our... Is our thing for all the audio? Oh wait, that's the wrong one. There's so many riddles in the riddle section. This is the <laughs> official guide for uh, the game. <laughs> I am twice as old as three times the age of the Sphinx of Gazia, Agamemnus. It's a post. It's uh, got a uh, comma. That's why I'm pausing, mm -hmm. just so you know. So I am twice as old as three times the age of the Sphinx of Gazia, Agamemnus. Divided by one ninth the age of the Sphinx of Canis, Ignon, who left this world 26 years ago. What is my age? <laughs> I don't even know what those two. I don't know if those were references to something that they were supposed to be telling me about. There no, was no, no. Another one. So if it wasn't 8 a.m., uh, so there are two <laughs> things. It doesn't matter what they are called. Uh, one mm -hmm. of them left the world, what, 26 years ago? Yeah. And he is <laughs> three times the age of one ninth of 26 and then double that or something like that. I don't know. I need to read it. Like, if it was written down. Yeah. I I'll send it to you. In a so what is it? Though? I Hold bring... on. Though. I need yeah, to... yeah. So the reason I bring up this riddle specifically is because I said I have no idea what this is. How about the number 107? That sounds cool. The answer was 108. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So I Googled this. I was watching Lotus' stream and I Googled this riddle because I was like... How is anybody supposed to sit there long enough? It's a video game. We're not going to do math. And so I Googled the riddle and I didn't hear Lotus say 10, 107 because I was Googling the thing. And when I came back, I was like, oh, the answer is 108. And he goes, are you serious? Like, you're joking. <laughs> I had no idea what he had just guessed. So and I was like, no, I, I'm being serious. It's 108. <laughs> I thought she was saying that just to screw with me, like, oh, you were only one off. That's too bad. No, I literally guessed a random number. <laughs> and I was one number off of the real number based on literally nothing. Yeah, but do we um, know why it was 108? I don't, because my reward for getting it wrong was a wall opened up and I was attacked by a bunch of skeletons. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so that was my reward for... We're getting it wrong. Um, but yeah, uh, so that riddle in particular was truly awful. Uh, tr truly awful. Usually they're not quite that over the top. They're a little bit logic-y and stuff. But uh, yeah, so anyways, I got through that. Um, and then at the end, that last room really got bad with a lot of high-end crap. And it was just spawning stuff left and right. And um, I don't remember who was in chat. I know Luna uh, Spear uh, joined in as well. Everybody decided that it would be fun that every time I died and added one to the death counter because my health was like five <laughs> hit points. So it was really hard for me to try to get health back because every time I would sleep, it would spawn more enemies who would then kill me. <laughs> I love when that uh, happens. Yep. Yeah. So the universal decision was that every time I die, I should do five push-ups. <laughs> Which started to get pretty rough after I kept dying. Um, and then every time the game crashed, I had to do ten jumping jacks. Oh, God. Which, that was joked about, and then the game immediately crashed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... I managed to uh, have myself a little miniature workout, but got through uh, the Halls of Colossus. I went back outside, got back to town, slept for my magic uh, visions that I get. And you'll be quite pleased to know, Pixie, the next destination is Somerset, because I now need to go to the Crystal Tower to get the yes! next uh, <laughs> Yep. So the only benefit was by going to Somerset, it means I can buy another one of those rings of 
uh, pass wall. <laughs> so in case I get stuck, I have a way out. Amazing. Yep. Also, but, you get, you'll uh, so, probably get to kill a bunch of elves. I no. I would assume yes. so. There were a lot of lizard mans in um, the halls of Colossus, which I thought was a little peculiar. But, it's because uh, of the dragons. We oh, you know about... what? There it is. That's <laughs> that's got to be what it was. They're just mini dragons. <laughs> <laughs> See, so lizard mans are not Argonians. They're just little dragons. They're just, uh, I guess they're just they're lizard mans. Oh. Man. And I guess the only thing that I would mention enemy-wise on the topic of lizard mans, the amount of enemy sprites in this game is pretty over the top. Um, and I found a new one after all this time <laughs> where a serpent lady came out and attacked me at one point and i was like oh my god it's a medusa and somebody in chat was like oh it's a lamia i'm like oh of course <laughs> it's a lamia like duh and then i killed it and the game said congratulations you killed a medusa the medusa has something for you and i'm like oh come on <laughs> like... <laughs> so <laughs> confirmed lamias and medusas are the same and arena is really about as non-canon as it can get so <laughs> i'm sorry i don't want to hear any lore buffs telling me that things don't make sense in this world because they didn't make sense in the first game <laughs> <laughs> so we started off on a bad foot <laughs> but yeah so that was uh that was my mix of uh eso pseudo failure and uh arena pseudo failure <laughs> All right. Well, is that is that it? That is it for me. All right. Well, that brings us to news, and we are at well, we are nearing two and a half hours. So I'm, I mean, we don't have too long news. Yeah. Uh, especially and that if we include the pre-stream stuff. Uh, no. It Our, doesn't. My actually. recording's only an hour and forty-three. So oh, we're really? not quite at two yet. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, I was looking at the live hour. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are nearing two hours then. Longer. That's fine. Behind um, the scenes. <laughs> we've been nearing two hours. That means we have another hour in us. Oh, God. <laughs> well, maybe in you, but I am about to fall asleep. <laughs> no, I'm, I have discovered that my desk's, like, pull-out section, like, makes a really great footrest, so I'm just, like, getting comfortable. <laughs> just uh, slowly comfort level rising. You'll be sleeping. unconscious. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> micro naps. <laughs> Drones are about to raise or Cyrodiil. <laughs> All right, so we don't have much news, but we have some important news. Uh, we're going to start with the Crown Store Showcase for August 2020. Um, there are some cool items in there. There are a bunch of dates as usual. I'm not going to go into all of them, but... A bunch of the stuff in here are limited time only. Um, so if you are interested in any of these, definitely go to elderscrollsonline.com and check the article yourself for the exact dates these are available for. Mm -hmm. So this month we are getting a Trinimac statue for the ESO Plus free deal, which is nice. But now we have like 25 of these. I don't even know where to put them in my house. That's yeah, valid. We'll, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll scatter them some randomly. Stack them up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's going to be an Ice Reach Coven motif. I'm not sure if this is available in the game. I don't remember. But uh, yes, you'll be getting. I think. I so, think yeah. yeah the, motifs are always available in game as well. Uh, thankfully, um, right. this will be from Ice Reach. It'll be. Uh. It's getting added into the dungeon. Uh, vet, you have a good chance of getting it. Uh, vet hard mode, you have a guaranteed drop. All right, there you go. So we get another artifact outfit style, which is the Sword of Jigalag. It is limited time only August 13 to August 17. It is a very cool looking great sword. Yep. Uh, the next arms pack will be for Nerineth, or however it's called. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, the Lich from Crypt of Hearts. Yeah, it Lichy. has blue flames and things <laughs> like that. Uh, it's a, well, it's a, it's a lichy, yeah, as I said, lichy arms yeah. pack. Uh, <laughs> we are getting some costumes as usual. Um, the new moon crown crates are returning. 
available from August 20 to August 27. I said I wasn't going to read the dates, but I just did it, they catch my eye. Yeah, so. they're literally right there, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Storm, Stone Torn Collector's Bundle. This will be with the release of Stone Torn DLC on August 24 and will be available. Um, okay, yeah, it will be available from August 24 for PC and September 1 for consoles because they get the DLCs a week or two after PC yeah, Mac. So it's can been condensed to a week because yeah, of actually, Stadia. It used to be two weeks. Now it's it just one week. Yeah, now it seems like since Stadia is in the rotation as well, which I assume means there's some degree of a holdup for the PC certification now, mm -hmm. it seems like it has been... Uh, condensed so that there's only a one week separation between us, which is kind of nice. That's that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a little bit more fair. Yep. So collectors bundle usually have um, a bunch of things. So this one includes the Dorzog pad, a mount, and more stuff as well as the DLC. Obviously, um, there's going to be an elsewhere collectors pack. So it's going to include all the bonus content of the elsewhere digital collectors edition as well as the pre-order digital items, but it does not include Rod Mothra mount or elsewhere DLC. Um, so what happens is every year when, a ne when the next chapter releases, the previous chapter turns into a DLC basically. So mm -hmm. since Greymore expansion released, elsewhere expansion became a DLC. Um, but this Elsewhere Collector's Pack will not include the Elsewhere DLC, so you will still have to purchase that individually. Now, I think this is the most um, popular item in the Crown Store this month. It's the Vampiric Sovereign Statue. <laughs> it is a massive Vampire Lord statue, which I really hate, because I hate Vampire Lords. They look ugly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you are into that... This one you can interact with to turn on the lights, which are like red and stuff like that. So it's an interactable um, statue. It is quite big. It is the it is the statue from the physical collector's edition of Greymore, and it will be available from August four to August twenty, which is nice. These are usually a lot short, shorter duration things, um, but here it is. This is also nice. Azura furnishing pack. Um, it has the tapestries, banners, Azura statue, altars, and things like that. It's very nice looking. August 13th, August 17th. A music box. Another music box. The Shadows Stir. And um, that'll be limited from August 13th to August 20. And remember that massive vampire mansion that is in Blackreach. That was... Um, that we, you know, saw the videos of, saw in PTS, things like that. That is now available. Crown, this is only available with crowns, right? It's You can't buy this with gold. Right. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I didn't check this, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be available for August 4 to August 20. I expect it's probably around summer 13K. I didn't check it either. It doesn't say it on the article. Um, but it is a massive, highly gothic, vampiric mansion deep in Blackreach with lava rivers underneath and high towers, sort of like cathedral sort of design. So if you're into that sort of architecture, it's definitely a nice one to have. We're also going to be getting some uh, mounts, pets, not going to go into details of those. Um, so there you go. Yeah, it's a lot of items this week. You said not this going week. to details on those pets, but yeah. there are two pets that I really want to mention because they're gorgeous. All right, that go ahead, Scald then. Muse Griffin is so pretty and has so many colors in its wings, and I I need it. And then also the Veil hmm. Deer, the Veil Fawn. I wanted that since I saw them in Blackreach. It's they are they are they are very nice. Yeah, I mean the Griffin is super colorful. It's like a full rainbow wings and everything like that it's face as well like parrot meets griffin <laughs> and you have exactly what this looks like well since we mentioned those let's also mention the mounts uh Sorry. we are gonna get yeah <laughs> durzog mangler which is the you know the durzog enemies well think of that but as a mount 
it actually looks quite evil and fierce. <laughs> it is really cool, though. I actually really like that mount. Uh, I've mentioned in the past that I like fierce mounts. So this is one that I actually really, really mm -hmm. like. And it looks like the collector's edition mount is really yeah. similar to or the same one. I can't really tell. But uh, yeah, it's it's really cool looking and I really like it. They a are. Lot. They are. All right. So our next bit of news is that Elder Scrolls Online will be coming to the next gen, next generation consoles, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. And if you have the current version of the game on the console, you will be able to upgrade free to the um, to the next generation consoles version. Um, they are working on backwards comp backwards compatibility uh, mm -hmm. so that you can play both. Like if you have it on Xbox Series X and PlayStation Five, and if you have a PlayStation Four and things like that, you'll be able to play with the same account. Um, but this is not promised. They say they are planning to support it and they are working on it. Um, but so, yeah, uh, I yeah, Lotus, is, you have some comments this on this. This is a mixed bag. Um, I very much appreciate that. That is that is really awesome. That 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 we will have uh, the ability to progress forward with our profiles. Um, and obviously anything you had, the fact that you are then also allowed to play with people who have not made the upgrade yet, it seems like, um, is another fantastic feature. That is mm -hmm. that is really great. I am a big fan of us getting that. However, I am also at the same time pretty sad... <laughs> that this did not result in what I've long been hoping for, which was a universal transfer of something like that, um, where we would be allowed to not necessarily cross play with Xbox or PC or PS4 with each other, but like even be able to pull the file. Um, you do still need to maintain the same console family. So yeah. it is a small step well not even a small step forward that's a very cool feature right? <laughs> don't get me wrong i i really really like it um i just wish it was what i wanted which was the universal transfer mm -hmm. but i will certainly take let me put it this way prior to this announcement i was not planning on buying a ps5 <laughs> now that this announcement exists i am considering buying a ps5 <laughs> so <laughs> They got you, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. So there is that. Whereas, like, my PC is better than whatever the next-gen things are going to be. Like, it would have been fine to transfer over. But if I could get a substantial increase in play and it's also still backwards compatible, that's still a, a very cool feature. That is a selling point. And what's more is the fact that they're just giving it to us for free and not mm -hmm. charging some type of fee or anything like that is very consumer friendly. I know people like to rip on nickel and diming stuff. Hmm. Well, at the same time, I also appreciate when I don't feel like I'm being nickel and dimed. So <laughs> awesome, but much, much appreciated because backwards compat and forwards compat, not quite as user friendly on console for whatever reason as it is on PC. So I do appreciate what we got. And I have not given up hope on one day being able to pull my file elsewhere, but I, I will certainly <laughs> take this for what it is because it is a, it is still very much appreciated. Yeah. I mean, I really hope they, the only reason I really want them to do a universal character copy option is that I can tank with you? Like I don't, I don't plan on going oh, to man, console like ever. A, oh, we could do like a vet trial or something. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, That'd I will have fun. 250 ping, so that's gonna be rough. That's but... I, mean, I, 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 I also if, if have we... a tank, so we could do a three tank run. Oh, there we see, go. There, three there tank, go. one healer, no DPS. Seven years yes. in Fungal Grotto. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we, we have one more piece of news. And with the QuakeCon happening right now as we are recording this, um, there's also a 
free to play week for Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, so it, it's already active and it will happen until August 19 for PC and August 24, well, PC and Xbox and August 24 PlayStation. So you'll be able to play ESO for, well, uh, until next week, August 19 and August 20. Yep. Uh, you just need to go to the Elder Scrolls Online website and you will be able to actually, like, it will direct you. There will There's an option that says, like, play free. You click on it, you pick your platform, create your account and things like that. Uh, it will involve all the original content of the game. I don't think it has any of the DLCs and things like that. Actually, no. It does give you access to Greymore Prologue. So, oh, it's also base game. So, yeah, basically you get access to base game. Um, Greymore is also currently on discount for 35%. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna still be by the time I get to upload this show so if you are listening <laughs> us live um you can get gray more upgrade or standard edition collector's edition things like that for 25 percent off that's going to be until august 11 for both north america and europe which hopefully i'll be able to get this show by the 10th latest so like if you are not following eso Actively, you will still be able to um, hear that in time. Now, and if you hear this late, travel back in time and buy it at a discount so that yep. it doesn't cost you as much. Do. Yeah, no, it's a piece of cake. Um, I was going to say, just grab yourself <laughs> an Elder Scroll and pull yourself up a Dragon Break, and you'll be good to go. I was going to um, say DeLorean, but yours is more lore friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are a lot of dates because there are so many different. Uh, discounts, sales for all these different things. So Greymore PC, Greymore Stadia, Standard Edition Stadia, Greymore Xbox One, Standard Edition Xbox One, Greymore PlayStation. So all of those have like different timings and different dates for when they end. I do not know why, but basically go to the Elder Scrolls Online's website, find the article named save up to 50% and play free during QuakeCon at home and look at the dates there. There's also a crown pack sale um, that is going on for PC, Mac, Steam, and Xbox One. That is for um, August 10. So pretty much the same day this will be released, unless I wake up early and release it today. Um, and it's going to be for August 11 for Stadia and August 17 for PlayStation 4. Again, I have no idea where there are 75 different dates and times <laughs> uh but yeah go check out the thing there are a bunch of sales both for elder scrolls online standard edition graymore and crown packs and you can play it for free until august 19 and yes. that, so yeah. even though this isn't a free-to-play game do yourself a favor download it and test it out see if you like it this game has a lot to offer um and I do find it uncommon that people try the game and they do not find one aspect of it that they really enjoy. And since you don't have to pay to get in and give it a shot, now would probably be your best guess or your best get as <laughs> to being able to try it yourself as opposed to kind of need to live vicariously through other people who are, if they're playing the game, it's a good chance they're invested in the game. So <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk too much about how you shouldn't play the game if you're playing the game because you clearly like it. So yeah. yeah. Although the forums might lead you to believe otherwise. Oh yeah. <laughs> forums are dark and full of terrors. Yeah. They're, Don't they're, go there. They're dark and full of terrors. None of them play it. <laughs> Just like arena. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, well, that brings us to the end of the show. We are at the two-hour mark, just past it. So, Lotus, where can people find you? So, I am Lotus of Doom on Twitch and Twitter and Discord when I remember to check it. Um, In-game as well. So, pretty much if you ever see Lotus of Doom, uh, that would be me. 
All right, Pixie. You can find me on Twitch at HyperPixie Gaming and on Twitter at HyperPixie Games because of character limits. <laughs> well, definitely follow uh, these two amazing people. They both stream a lot of Elder Scrolls Online, a lot of Bethesda content, um, sometimes Animal Crossing by Pixie. And, uh, <laughs> but with she still manages to sneak in Elder Scrolls Online there with yep. creating <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online related costumes and Animal Crossing. Um, <laughs> You can find everything we do over at DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There is the entire backlog of our previous podcasts, active shows, uh, social media links, and things like that. We have multiple. We have t- on Twitter, Tales of Tomriel, uh, and Dungeon Crawl Net for the Dungeon Crawler Network itself. I completely forgot about our Instagram account, Tales of Tomriel Podcast. I haven't been posting anything there. Hopefully, I shall, I'll start again. I forgot Perfect. that I created that. Um, <laughs> you can follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network for all the live shows, or you can go over to youtube.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network for all the other recorded content. I have about 200 gigabytes of Dungeon and Trial runs to edit through, which I'll be able to do after August. Um, and uh, you can support us over at Patreon at patreon.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network. It comes with benefits, things like, you know, us, throwing us into wet frost vaults <laughs> with no gear, apparently, which I'm actually really considering that one. That was a sub well spent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you can also support us by leaving an iTunes review because that helps people know that we're a real podcast, that we say real words, and sometimes they matter every now and then. Thank you all so very much for joining us on this episode of Tales of Tomriel. We will see you all next time if you are up and awake. So stay healthy, stay safe, wash your hands, and we will see you next time. Bye, Bye. everybody. When Akatosh slew Lorcan, he ripped his heart right out. He hurled it across Tamriel, and the heart was heard to shout. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end. The laughing heart sprayed blood afar, a gout on seer it fell. And like a dart shot to its mark, down in an alien well. Magic effused the lork in blood to crystal red and strong. Then wild elves cut and polished it down to chimel at a ball. Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men. Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end. When elves lost Nern to men, Akatosh gave the stone. To Saint Alesh in token of her right to sit the throne Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end